Here's an example of a group if you've had some linear algebra. So I'm going to let g be equal to 2 by 2 invertible matrices over the real numbers. The fancy name for this is GL2R, the general linear group of 2 by 2 matrices with real entries. So the elements are going to be 2 by 2 matrices. A, B, C, and D are real. To be invertible, it's the same as saying that the determinant is non-zero. So we have that A times D minus B times C is non-zero. We want to show three things. First, I want to show that G is a group under matrix multiplication. Then, we'll have the subset SL2R. So it's going to be the special linear group, two by two matrices with real entries. That's defined as just a set of matrices whose determinant is equal to one. I want to show that that's a normal subgroup of G. Then we have a notion of conjugation of matrices, a notion of conjugation of group elements. We just want to show that they line up. To show that G is a group, we'll need to show four items. We'll need that G is closed under matrix multiplication, that there's an identity element in G, that matrix multiplication is associative, and that we're closed under taking inverses. Now, to see that G is closed under matrix multiplication, we pick A and B and G. So those are going to be two by two matrices. They're invertible, so their determinants are non-zero. We take the product. So I want to check whether determinant a times B is non-zero. If so, then A times B satisfies the defining property of G, and so it's in there. Now, to do that, we're going to have a theorem from linear algebra. If I take the determinant of a product of two matrices, it's the same as the product of the determinants. Now, if you don't have that under your belt, since we're in the two by two case, it's easy enough just to grind that out, just to convince yourself. So, if we take the product of the determinants, well, since these are both non-zero, there's no way that I can get zero out. So, we're going to have that the determinant of A times B is non-zero, so A times B is in G. So, close under multiplication. Next, we want an identity element in G. So, this is going to be an element such that if I take any element in G, multiply by the identity on the left or right, you get your element G back. The obvious candidate here is going to be the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So that definitely does what we promised with an identity as far as multiplication. The only thing I need to check is that it's actually in G itself. So to do that, we have to check its determinant. So we're going to get 1. That's non-zero. So my identity is in G. For associativity, we're going to pick three matrices, A, B, C, and G, then we're going to multiply. So I want to show that if I take A times B times C, it's equal to B times C, and then we multiply in front by A. Now, this is going to be an inherited property of two by two matrices in general. So there it holds whether you're invertible or not. So if I insist on A, B, and C being invertible, certainly it's still going to hold. If you haven't seen this before, then you should just grind it out in general. So you take three matrices, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, W, I, J, K, L, and then work out both sides. And then you'll see that you get equality. Now, for G being closed under taking inverses, so I'm working with two by two matrices. Okay, we have an actual formula. So if the determinant is non-zero, A inverse is given as one over the determinant times, okay, we flip on the diagonal, negate off the diagonal. Now, that doesn't show that A inverse is in G. To do that, we have to take the determinant. So. What happens here? 
Well, if I have this scalar out in front and I multiply the matrix by it, we're going to multiply each row by that scalar. When I take the determinant, I'm allowed to pull scalars out of each row. So we could pull that scalar out of each row, so it's going to show up on the outside twice to give me a square. Then if we take the determinant of what's here, I get determinant of AD minus BC. That's the determinant of A. I can cancel a determinant of A in the numerator and the denominator, leave me with 1 over determinant of A. Since determinant of A is non-zero, flipping it over is still going to be non-zero. So A in versus in G. Now, to do that a little bit more abstractly, so I don't have to force myself to work with two by two matrices. I want an argument that works in general. What I could do is note A times A inverse is the identity. Take the determinant of both sides. So the determinant of the identity matrix is going to be 1. And then here, we're going to use our rule from before. I can write the determinant of a product as the product of the determinants. And then I just divide both sides by determinant of A. So determinant of A inverse equals 1 over determinant of A. If determinant of A was non-zero, then flipping it over stays non-zero. So note, this works for general square matrices, and it also checks our calculation in the 2 by 2 case. So putting all that together, I have GL2R is a group. And you'll note, if you go through, all the pieces in place for showing GLNR is a group. And here we're talking about invertible n by n matrices. Now, to make this work, we're going to lean heavily on determinant of a product equals the product of the determinants.